This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Page 33. Consolidation is the process of adjusting and combining financial information from the individual financial statements of the individual companies within the group. And the parent will prepare group accounts. Group accounts are presented as though all the companies within the group are combined and the group accounts will show the results of the group as though it were a single company. It isn't. I'm the parent, you are all my subsidiaries, you are each of you a separate legal person in your own right, you will file your own financial statements with the company registry, with the government, you'll compute your own taxation and account to the revenue for the taxation, but when it comes to consolidation time, I'm going to take all of your results and all of your assets and all of your liabilities, I'm going to add them to mine, and I'm going to present them as the Mike Group financial statements. Even though the group itself does not exist as a separate legal person, we pretend that it does. And that's the process of consolidation. The consolidated statement of financial position reflects assets and liabilities within the control of the parent. Consolidated financial statements are the financial statements of a group presented as though they were a single company. So look at the example there, Rasa and Tatiana. Rasa acquired 100% of Tatiana on the 1st of January for $18,000. At that date, at that date, the statements of financial position were as follows. Can you prepare the consolidated statement of financial position for the Rasa group as at the date of acquisition? Working one. It's the group structure. The title, if you were ever to want to write the title of Working One, it's the group structure. It's the picture, the picture of the group. And this is Rasa and Tatiana. And Rasa owns 100% of Tatiana. After working one comes working two, but I've not told you about it yet, so not applicable in this example. I've not told you yet what working two is. Working three is the consolidated retained earnings. Remember what we're trying to achieve with working three, we're trying to find the retained earnings of the parent plus the parent's share of the subsidiary's post-acquisition retained earnings. I'll leave you to do that one. H is own plus H is share of S post act retained. Set it out the way I've shown you. These are easy examples. These are very straightforward examples. When I ask you to set it out the way I've shown you, it's not because I don't think you're competent or capable. 
It's because I want you to get used to the idea of the layout and, and what it is we're trying to achieve. So set it out with the two columns, Rasa and Tatiana. Per the question, bless the pre-acquisition, therefore post-acquisition, our share, All of this 10,000 in Tatiana had been achieved by Tatiana as at the date that we acquired. So the whole 10,000 is pre-acquisition. We're doing the consolidation on the date of acquisition. Tatiana has had no chance to make any profits after our acquisition date. So we've got 100% of nothing. The consolidated... Retained earnings are therefore 22,000. And we can then go straight into statement of financial position. Other assets is 30 plus 20. Shares is always, only, ever the parent company. 20,000. Consolidated retained earnings is in working three, and that's 22,000. Liabilities is six and two. your first consolidation and they do say don't they do you always remember your first one Page 34, share capital, always only ever, share capital of the parent. I'm going to stop saying that soon. I will soon stop saying always only ever the share capital of the parent. But it is always only ever the share capital of the parent. Retained earnings of 10,000 in Tatiana were all achieved before Rasa gained control. And because the question asks for consolidated statement of financial position at date of acquisition, uh, poor old Tatiana has had no chance to make any profits subsequent to acquisition. 
So in this example, consolidated retained earnings is just the parent, but that's, I think, the last time that that will be so. That's the last time there will, from now on, be post-acquisition profits in the subsidiary. A year later, example two. Go on, you do it. You do example two. On your own. If you've finished it, then you can get into these many exercises at page 193. the previous example. What are you working on in this example? <laughs> just the parent. Share capital. Yeah, just the parent share capital. Oh, okay. Always on the other. the post acquisition. Our share of the post acquisition adds on to the parent. Right. So 
do a working three. 31,000. 14 minus the pre -ank. Therefore gives me the post acquisition. My share of the post acquisition adds on to 31. Mm -hmm. I'll do it on the screen in a sec. Okay. Okay, working one doesn't change from the previous example. It's still Rasa, still has 100% of Tatiana. Working three, consolidated retained earnings. As the parent company's own, plus the parent's share of the subsidiary post-acquisition retained. Now, some of you are shortcutting it, some of you are saying that 4 there in the Tatiana column simply adds on to the 31 in the Rasa column to give me 35. You will get in trouble because these are very, very straightforward examples. There will be situations in the very near future where there are a number of adjustments to make to these figures. And if you don't set it out the way that I've shown you, then you could very well make silly mistakes. And I'm sorry if I sound like my father. You don't know my father, but trust me, I do sound like him. Do it my way, because my way is best. You think you know best, you're wrong. I know best. So do what I say. Did your father sound the same? Yeah. I think all fathers do. It's a role that fathers have to play, isn't it? Do it my way. I know best. Well, I do. You may think you do. Okay, so we set it out per the question, deduct the pre-acquisition in the subsidiary. That then gives us the post-acquisition. And if we go back to that original little mantra, H is own plus H is share of S post ac retained, then you have to finish up with H is own, 31. H is share, 100% of the subsidiary post acquisition. That gives me 100% of 4 and consolidated retained earnings, therefore 35. Ah, right, down at the bottom of page 34, the note. The consolidated statement of financial position shows the assets under the control of RASA. We've eliminated the investment in RASA, that is gone. Share capital always only ever the parent company. Because we're preparing these financial statements for the benefit of the RASA shareholders. There's no reason to do this otherwise. It's the RASA shareholders for whose benefit this is being done. And included in the consolidated statement, therefore, is RASA's share of the profits less losses made by Tatiana since we acquired. Aramis and Oleg on page 35. Well, it's the same example as Rasa and Tatiana. So again, I should be able to allow you and leave you to do Aramis and Oleg. So do Aramis and Oleg. One of you, incidentally, one of you when preparing the consolidated statement, there is the consolidated statement, I'm sorry. There's the consolidated statement of financial position. One of you in that last example of Rasa and Tatiana was writing out the question, other assets, I'm putting the figures in, I can't remember what they were, and then share capital, I seem to remember the figures were 20,000 and 8,000. In an exam, you will not have time to do this. You do not have time to write out the question. You've only got 45 minutes for this question. 
if there's a five mark part B, you've only got 20 marks in the numbers, 20 marks is only 36 minutes. You only have a very limited amount of time available to you. You will not have time to write the question out like this. And in fact, I would suggest that you don't write other assets, you don't write share capital, you do it as I've done it there. That's my answer. If that were in an exam question, that's my answer as it would appear in the exam answer page. These figures, current liabilities, I would show how the figure of 11 was made up. Share capital, always only ever the parent, I wouldn't write share capital, I'd just write shh. Other assets, OA. Consolidated retained earnings, consret years, or even CRE. You've referred it to working three. Working three, I didn't call consolidated retained earnings, I called it consret years. I didn't write Rasa and Tatiana. R and T is enough. Pre acquisition, post acquisition, per question. Abbreviate. As long as the abbreviation makes sense to you, it should make sense to the marker. And it's saving you all that time of having to write out all these longer words. A question when I was taught, when I went on courses, a question might say you were prepare, required to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position of the Rasa Group as at 31st December 2010. And my tutor said there are marks specifically available for writing this out, for writing Rasa Group consolidated statement of financial position as at 31st December 2010. There were marks, there were, when I was a student, but there aren't now. He also taught, my tutor also taught me, that presentation was really important, and quite rightly, because in those days it was. And he taught us that when we have a heading like this, we just have to get a straight edge, a ruler, and we draw a line, a straight edge line underneath it. In red. In red, we had to draw, had to put the pen down and pick up a red pen and, and draw the lines and then put your red pen down. Oh, God, did it look gorgeous. It, it looked beautiful. And Marcus were impressed. They're not now. They do like nice presentation, like it to be neat. But I'm not going to suggest that you pick up a ruler and your red pen and start drawing lines. Even lines like this, 35, even that had to be with a ruler in red. Two lines there in red with a ruler. It looks gorgeous, honestly. Particularly if the colour ink that you use is black, which it must be in the exam. You must use black ink in the exam, black ballpoint. Not black ink with a fountain pen, not blue. Not pencil, not purple, green, red, and I've even marked one exam in yellow. Can you imagine writing an exam in yellow ink? Ugh! Awful. Uh, it's got to be black biro, black ballpoint. Um, and it looks lovely. I seriously, it looks, it looks so pleasing on the eye to have black writing with red underline. Look at the, look at, um, at, um, uh, the black and red around the room. It looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah.